I'm getting the new drive opening lined up here in my wooden computer case. In my last video I talked about modifying this to use in my office. So I've gone ahead and started doing that. I've actually got a lot done already and I'll quickly go through that before we get on to new stuff. The very first thing that I did was I glued the door panel that used to open on the front in place and to do that I just put a strip of tape on there and then I squeezed some glue around the cracks in the corners and let that set up overnight. And then the next day all I did to finish it off was to add a panel on the inside. And this is actually the panel that used to be in there covering the back of that compartment where the DVD drive used to be. The next thing I had to do was correct a mistake that I made in the original build. And that was where the back panel is. I left a little bit too much wood sticking out there so it's partially covering that over. And I know I had a problem plugging in a HDMI cable before. So I just want to trim that back using the router and I've got a fence set up there the right distance away. I've got two new fans to put in this. In the situation where I'm going to be using this computer, it's not really critical that it be super quiet. What I really want is good airflow through the case. So I'm replacing the single larger fan with two smaller ones. And these smaller ones are supposed to be actually pretty quiet. I bought these on a recommendation in a video on the DSLR Video Shooters channel. Caleb said they're really quiet, so I'll take his word for it. Anyway, the problem I have here is I've got a large hole in the back and it's too large for the fans I want to use, so I just can't install one there and then cut another hole. Instead, what I want to do is make a bezel from plywood that will hold both fans and at the same time cover that old hole. The old fan was five and a half inches and the new fans are four and three quarters, but the hole that they actually blow through is just four and a half. So I laid that out with my compact compass and then cut it out with the jigsaw. This is half inch plywood that I'm using here. I didn't have anything thinner. And there's a couple of different ways I could mount it on the back of the cabinet. The first is to cut an exact hole that this thing would fit inside and then glue it in place flush with the back. The other way is to mount it on the surface and that way I don't have to be as precise with the hole that I cut, but it's gonna look pretty clunky with the thickness of the plywood. So I've decided to make a lip and that effectively makes the edge of the plywood a quarter inch so that that won't look as bad when I put it on the back. Now to mount it on the back, I'm just using polyurethane construction adhesive. And then I'm gonna fire in some pins just to hold it until that glue dries. Okay, that was the easy stuff, I guess you could say. The next tricky thing that I have to do is I need to make this case two inches shorter. So believe it or not, I'm gonna do that on a table saw, but I'm gonna be extra careful. I don't wanna ruin all the hard work I put into this already. So the first cut that I'm gonna make is a very shallow scoring cut. And what that does is it cuts through the veneer without creating any chip out. And that's the real risk here of chipping this veneer as I cut it. So after the scoring cut is made, I can move the fence slightly so that it pushes the blade away from that scoring cut. And then I can make the full depth cut. And there's no risk of me chipping out the side that I wanna keep. So that went well, but it did leave the bottom of the case uh, rough looking. And the body of this case is made from particle board and I want to cover that up with something. So I'm gonna make a molding that does that and also you know, widens the footprint of the bottom. And I'm basically just cutting that out of a piece of old two by four that I had. And I'm cutting a rabbit in that fits around that edge and leaves about an eighth of an inch of material on the bottom to cover that raw particle board. And then to install that, I'm just gonna use more polyurethane construction adhesive. And this time I'm not gonna put any pins in there. I'm just gonna clamp it in place and leave it overnight to dry. And so all that leads me back here where I'm trying to line up this drive in the center of the unit here. I figure that's gonna look the best. And this is the part of the modifications, I guess you could say, that I'm most concerned with because it's a cut, it's a tricky cut because it has to be nice and square and fit this drive perfectly. And it's right through the front panel. So now when I built this case in the beginning, 
you know, when I made this door here in the front, I already, you know, I cut everything in the raw particle board and then I added the, the veneer afterwards and I can't do that here. So that looks good. I've got it three quarters of an inch down from the top because the top itself is three quarters of an inch. And also that leaves a little bit on the bottom here because I was concerned about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off. I'm going to put some tape on there and then I'm going to put the drive back in place because I really should have done this to begin with. I don't know what I was thinking. And then I'm going to mark on the plywood where the drive needs to be cut out. Now to make that cut, it's going to be like a combination of tools. The first thing I'm going to use is the drill to make a hole for the jigsaw and I'll use the jigsaw to make the cut, well, relatively close to the line. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to finish the cut, or as much of it as I possibly can, with the router again. I'm going to set up a fence that's clamped on and use that as a guide to make my cuts along each side and go as far into the corner as I possibly can. I just finished pulling the tape off because it was messing with the thing here. Also, I didn't realize that there were nails in here, so I've already cut through a couple. Not good for the router bit, but uh, it's too late now. Now I could probably go a little further into the corners here, but I don't want to press my luck. So I'm just going to change to the other side. And to do that, I'm just going to loosen my long reach clamps here and then shift this special fence, this U-shaped thing I've got here, to the other side and carefully line it up and then make the cut on that side. At least on that side, there won't be any nails, as far as I know. Okay, that's the worst of it, getting those two longer parts done. I'm gonna have to do the corners, like I said, or the sides, I guess you could say as well, by hand. So I'm just gonna line up the drive where it goes again. Actually, I'm just going to put it up there. Forget about the tape. It looks good, and that's all that counts. And mark around it with pencil. And then I'm just going to work at it with hand tools, files mostly. Of course, the best way to color this edge so that you can't see any raw wood inside there would be to paint it, but I don't want to be spraying paint in here. So I'm just going to use a marker to color the very edge like this. And one of the things I want to do before I finish up here today is sand this entire case, not through the finish, but uh, with 220 grit paper and then refinish it with a new coat of oil. All right, I finished up with the hole, got that ready to go. I've got one other thing to put in here, and it's the power switch uh, that I bought especially for this. And uh, I gotta, you know, laugh at these things. The, the designers that come up with this stuff obviously have never put in anything like this before. Uh, the hole that it mounts in, would it'll fit in a 5 8 inch hole. And then the lip that's around it is just 75 thousandths bigger than that hole. So you don't have a lot of margin for error. Now, I want to mount this also so it's slightly below the surface. I don't want to, you know, I could just drill a 5 8 inch hole here and mount that switch inside there and have it sticking out. And who cares really, you know. But instead, I want to make it, you know, more dangerous. So I'm going to drill a three quarter inch hole, which is actually significantly bigger than the outside of that switch. When in fact, it would have made sense to make that five eighths and then the outside three quarter. But no, what do I know? I don't design products like this. I only put them in. The next step is to drill a five eighths inch hole. And unfortunately, my Forstner bit here, the tip of it doesn't fit well and that hole moves around a bit too much so I don't want to ruin the hole so I'm going to start it actually with a spade bit and the benefit of using a spade bit is that it's got that long point on there 
so it will guide it in straighter. I did beat it up a little bit when the drill went all the way through. I should have clamped the backer on instead of holding it in there with my hand and being half afraid of drilling through my fingers. So live and learn. But you know, at 52, I've learned quite a bit it's just to remember it. I'm going to use the same trick with the marker around this hole to darken it up. And then, like I said, the next thing I need to do is to sand this case with 220 grit paper on the random orbit sander and then I'm going to give it a couple of coats of Danish oil. I'll let the first coat dry tonight and then I'll put another one on tomorrow and let that one dry overnight as well. well I finished the sanding and I opened up my Danish oil and I saw it was getting very thick so what I think I'm going to do is just put one coat of this on today and what that'll do is it'll even out the color after the sanding and then tomorrow, I'll give it a light sanding just by hand this time and finish it with water-based polyurethane just brushed on and wiped off in exactly the same way. Problem with this stuff is once it starts to thicken up inside the bottle like that, that means it's basically gone bad. I mean, adding thinner to it thins it down, but it kind of doesn't work the same after that. So. I'm going to wrap this video up here, actually, and the only thing really left to do is to put the computer hardware into this case, and I probably will make a video on that, but I'll post that on my Scrap Bin channel. If you want to watch that, there'll be a link to that video eventually when I get it made in the uh, description of this video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there were some uh, techniques that I did here that might help you out in the future and that's really the point of a lot of the stuff that I do it's not that someone's going to build this exact case but it's the things that you do along the way or the things that I do while I'm doing it that might be helpful if you want to build something of your own it doesn't necessarily have to be a computer case